Hey guys and girls, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through some different mindset comparisons so we can be really clear about the more negative types of mindsets that we want to leave behind and the more positive types of mindsets that we want to adopt and, and that we want to be practicing in our lives. Each time I share one, I'm going to give you some real simple tactics too that we can actually practice right away. Let's start with a really general one, the negative mindset versus the positive mindset. A negative mindset, I feel like one of the things that uh, defines it really well is that it's often stuck in the past. It's trying to relitigate the past. It's dredging up you know, bad memories about what happened before. It can't let things go. And uh, Or the other possibility is that it's w very worried about the future and it's feeling very negative and pessimistic about the future. A positive mind is really focused on the now and what it can do right now. If it is focused on the future, it's thinking idealistically about the future. But one of the things that I think is great about having a healthy and positive mind is that it's really focused on what it can do right now, what is under its control. Now, another thing that I can I think can really help you develop a more positive mind and way of being is to simply get out of doors and be more active. You need to make sure you have a healthy physical body that's well oxygenated, blood is circulating well, energy is circulating well, to, because the body has a, a very intimate relationship with the mind, that those two are, are really one thing. So when you get out and move and you're in nature and, you know, getting sunlight, getting oxygen, you're going to start to feel better. Maybe you can do anything from like a long walk in nature to maybe a jog or some stretching, a little bit of a, a workout to, to sweat. That's going to help you to start thinking differently. Another mindset we can compare, the fixed mindset compared to a growth mindset. If you have a fixed mindset, you'll tend to think that people just don't change. He is like this. She is like this. She's always like this. When you speak in those types of absolutes, it's an indicator that you're working with a fixed mindset yourself. People who are working with a growth mindset know that people can and do change. It's not always easy. It doesn't always happen very quickly, but it's absolutely a, a big part of what it means to be a human is that our minds have that neuroplasticity. We can learn, we can grow, we can change. And, you know, there's seasons of life that last days and weeks and months. Some of the seasons last years or decades, but people can and do change. And we can too. We can always make change for the better. Simple and small tactic here. Try to learn a new skill. Try to become a beginner again and prove to yourself the, the truth of this statement that you can grow, you can change, you can learn something new. Scarcity mindset versus the abundance mindset. This is something that I wish I had learned about when I was a lot younger. To me, I think it makes a lot of sense and it explains a lot of the problems in our world. If you're operating with the scarcity mindset, you think that there's you think that every resource is just limited. You have to protect whatever you have, and everybody in the world is competing to take these limited resources from each other. An abundance mindset um, believes that the world is in a constant form of creation, and we are a part of that creation, and we can always create more. There's, We can share what we have, and we can create more, and we can share that too. And it's, an, it's a mindset that believes overall the majority of the people in the world are coexisting, cooperating, and co-creating. And um, we can always participate together in a, in a sharing and a creation of more. So there's really no limitation with that sort of mindset. And um, one particular aspect we could look at has to do with money and wealth. And the tactic I would give is... If you want to realize the truth of these mindsets as it relates to money, associate with some people who are much more wealthy than you. You need to normalize um, wealth and you need to normalize being with rich people to realize that money in and of itself, it's not really good or bad. It's something that flows 
Um, and it's something that there can always be more of just has to do with your ability to create and deliver value will bring money to you. So get around wealthier people who have done it, people who have gone from having less to having more, see what they think about money and abundance. And I'm sure that can teach you a lot. The average mindset versus the leadership mindset. I'm really interested in leadership. Sometimes I teach classes about it or, or coach on it. And uh, yeah, I've really become sort of preoccupied with this mindset in the recent years because I found that actually for me, leadership begins at home with my family and the better, uh, the better man I can be, the better leader I can be, then the more smoothly my home life goes, the more smoothly my home life goes, the better things are going to go for me and my family when we go out into the world, into our community, into our schools, into our workplaces. So for me, it's something that starts as something that's really personal, but then I try to broadcast what I learn uh, for myself and my family out into my community. Um, average players, they don't want responsibility. They don't want problems. They just want to coast. They want to be on autopilot as it relates to work. And then beyond work, they just want to have fun. They just want to be entertained. So it sounds good, but the problem with this is you're not going to be growing. And it, it looks cool when you're maybe in your 20s, but after that, it quickly looks silly when you're 35, 45, 55, and you're still acting like a young boy or a young girl would. The older that you get, the more responsibility that you need to be able to bear, the greater it needs to be the greater your capacity needs to be to teach and to serve and to lead. Um, that's what we look up to. That's what we respect. That's what we admire. And for good reason, um, a leadership mindset that has to do with taking responsibility, taking challenges, not shying away from problems, but trying to solve them and use them as stepping stones to improve ourselves. So average players want entertainment. Leaders want education. It's been a long time for me now. I really can't enjoy entertainment like I used to when I was younger. For me, educating myself and improving myself is what is what is meant by that word education. I mean, learning and improving myself. For me, that's the new entertainment now. That's the only thing that really entertains me. Um, a tactic here would be to practice teaching what you know. So when you have to teach something, that's going to put you in the, a position of being a leader. And when you teach something, that's when you learn it at the greatest depth. To be able to teach something, you have to have learned it really, really well. And then through the teaching of it, you, be, you start to learn that content even better. I think everyone needs to have that experience of teaching something to feel like you can be a leader too. You have something to share. And if you feel like you have nothing to share, then go learn something. Put in enough hours on one simple on one single thing to get to a point where you could educate other people who know nothing about that thing. And then you'll get a taste of this leadership mindset. Um, the ungrateful mindset versus the grateful mindset. This one is super important because the mind... There's a term called hedonic adaptation, where the mind, it gets used to what it has, and it always wants more. It never, ever can be satisfied as long as it continues on down that road. So I believe wherever you are, with whatever you have, you have to learn to be grateful for that and appreciate that. Because if you don't know how to be grateful with what you have, with where you are right now, then you you will never learn to be grateful later when you have more of those things that you think you want. So I guess what I'm trying to say is a grateful mind begins right here, right now, where you are with what you have. An ungrateful mindset can never see what it has been gifted by the universe. And it always wants more. A grateful mindset has trained itself to appreciate just even the little things that happen in daily life and magnify those Appreciate the wonder of the natural world. Appreciate the, the beauty of children. Um, and uh, some simple tactics here would be to write thank, write thank you notes or start a gratitude journal. Start to train your mind to focus on the little things that you should be grateful for. 
And this has been a proven tactic in the field of psychology, that if you do these things, these little things more regularly, you're going to slowly become more and more happy, more and more positive, because you're training your mind to focus on those things rather than what you don't have, rather than what you want. A reactive mindset versus an intentional mindset. So this one also super, super important to me as I want to be a good man um, in my family life, a good father and a good husband. It's really important for a man to learn to control his emotions and his reactions or he could easily destroy his whole life and other people's lives, lives uh, with his anger. So, you know, for men... We're, we're so often, we are cultured to um, use strength and, um, yeah, just use to, to project our strength and to project our anger as, as a way to control situations. That's how we're kind of, you know, a cultured or conditioned to be uh, by our societies and by popular culture. But actually, I think the best men are the men who are in control of themselves, who know how to calm down and choose the right response. That means... Um, you're going to be able to be the person in control of all the interactions and the relationships. And that control, I mean, in a positive sense, you're going to be in control of the situations and you can take everybody, lead them down the right road. So a reactive mind is always instantly activating old patterns without ever thinking about them or knowing why it's doing it. So just imagine decades passing and you're still reacting in the same old ways to the same people. It's a horrible, horrible cycle to be in. You have to be able to slow down, journal on the problems that are always seeming to crop up in your life, and then figure out the next time it happens, what are you going to do? You got to break out of that cycle. You have to break out of that paradigm or that matrix. You have to start to choose different and better responses to break these cycles. So an intentional mindset realizes that for, for any types of problems or any type of problematic patterns that are happening in one's life, you can journal a plan of action. You can write down a code. It might be a series of steps. And you got to realize when the pattern's beginning to start, you got to catch it and then follow the plan of action, follow some of the steps you wrote down for yourself. You gotta, it's gotta be simple enough that you could call, call it to mind, or maybe it's posted somewhere where you can go to look at it. You have to learn to choose to calm down and then respond to the situation according to what you've decided your principles are. That's gonna be a key moment when you, when you evolve in your life because we don't get better when everything's smooth and happy. We get better when things are going to shit and we choose to manage our way out of that problem in a positive way. That's really when we grow. Now, a very, very simple tactic that we're taught from the time we're young by our teachers and parents is just calm down and count to 10. So that's a really simple one that I'll give you and remind you of. It works. Go for a walk. Take a few minutes. Just tell the other person that you need a little time just to calm down. They'll respect that. You'll come back and respond better. But a more complex tactic I can give you is what I alluded to earlier is you can journal on the types of problems that tend to trigger you, and you can write down how you would prefer to respond in the future. What would be your ideal way to respond? And then the next time that situation comes up, try to follow your plan. And it won't be perfect. The probably the first time, second time, or third time. But if you keep trying to remind yourself of that plan, you'll eventually start to get it. And you'll be really proud when you start to build your way out of those negative patterns. Okay, I think we're coming down the home stretch here. There might be one or two more. Closed mindset versus open mindset. This is also a very general and well-known one. Most people tend to have a closed mindset, especially the older they get. In my life, it's been very rare, but I admire it. I admire it tremendously when it happens when I meet an older person, potentially with a lot of work experience and a lot of qualifications and degrees, but they're the most humble, open-minded, curious, questioning person in the room. 
They don't lord their knowledge and experience over others. They always seem to believe like they're just starting out. And in my opinion, that makes them lethal. That makes them the absolute best. Whereas the people who think they know everything and the older they get, the more closed minded and uppity they get. In my opinion, those people still have a heck of a lot to learn. They're missing a lot of the pieces. Um, and I, I get it. I know why it happens because it's much more comfortable to feel like you have all the answers because that gives you a feeling like you're in the position of power in, in the, in a world or in situations where you, that you might actually feel like you're not in control. You want to assert yourself, then it's important for you to show off your closed mind and act like you know everything. But actually I think the greatest form of security and and confidence and self-assurance comes when we willingly admit that we don't know everything and and uh, humble ourselves first. So the open mindset, you're willing to consider new ideas. You're willing to try and understand other people's opinions that may differ from your own. You're willing to put your own ideas to the side for a moment to try to learn the other side um, and try new things. A tactic here would be to make a habit to expose yourself to new things regularly, like uh, maybe go to an art museum. If you're not the type of person who likes to go to art museums, try to go to one or try to listen to a new musical style. The other day, a student and a friend of mine out of the blue recommended uh, uh, that I listen to some dubstep, which I was just vaguely familiar with. So I, I listened to some songs that, that's a good habit. Listen to songs that other people send you that are kind of out of left field. That can bring you to a really new place, a form of discovery. But yeah, visit new places. Have new conversations with people from different countries. Okay, I think this right here is the last one. The insecure mindset versus the secure mindset. Insecure mindset believes that the world is dangerous and everybody's out to get them. And it's kind of like a paranoid mindset. It kind of ties back into that scarcity mindset. And the secure mindset is realistic. It acknowledges there are serious problems in the world, but the good is clearly more than the evil, or else we all wouldn't be here right now. We all would have destroyed ourselves a long time ago. And we can, we can choose to fight and be on the side of the good. A simple tactic would be to turn off the news because the news addicts us by constantly making us fearful. The human mind has a negativity bias uh, that's kept us alive since you know our earliest days on the savannah or whatever. Our mind needed to be able to train itself quickly on where the dangers are and keep us alive. But that kind of mind, it doesn't serve us in most typical daily situations nowadays. Um, that mind is kind of, we need to learn to override that with our intellect. Um, there's a quote, I forget who it came from. It might have been Einstein. He said, the most important decision a person has to make in their lifetime is to decide whether the universe is working for them or working against you, uh, is working for them or working against them. Do you think the universe is working for you or is it against you? Another quote I can share comes from, I believe, the philosophy of Stoicism, which says that the greatest form of security is to learn to want what is. So when you want what is, when you acknowledge it, when you can be okay with it, when you can work with it pragmatically and objectively, that's the greatest form of security. There's always going to be problems in the world. There's always going to be danger in the world. But we can choose to work with it in a dispassionate way. And that's the greatest form of security, to be okay with being insecure to some extent. Um, okay, I think that brings it to the end. Yes, it does. I'm going to stop that share. Let me know in the comment section down below which mindset resonated with you the most or excited you the most. Uh, you have a feeling that you want to try it out and get better with that particular mindset. Leave me a comment on that. Let's chat about it down below. I hope this helped a lot, and I'll see you back here in the next video. Bye-bye for now.